very good evening and welcome to the news tonight where we get you the day's top stories. I'm Tracy Shilshi and in the next 30 minutes I'll be getting you all the updates from Parliament and of course what took place in national and international news. Let's start with the headlines. Rajya Sabha Chairman Mohammad Hamid Ansari moves a resolution on the 75th year of the Quit India movement. Members in the upper house rededicate themselves to building a self-reliant, inclusive, secular and democratic India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses Lok Sabha, urges citizens to create a new India by 2022 that is free from poverty, corruption, terrorism, casteism and communalism. With a massive silent protest in Mumbai, Maratha community makes itself heard on the demand for reservations. Chief Minister Devendra Fatnavis says his government has told the Bombay High Court that it's in favour of extending reservation to the community. And after launching a series of missile tests, North Korea now threatens a missile strike on the U.S. Pacific territory of Guam. Warns, uh, the warning follows U.S. President Donald Trump's remarks that the U.S. will meet any aggression with fire and fury. Our top story this evening, Rajya Sabha members on Wednesday unanimously resolved to rededicate themselves to building a self-reliant, inclusive, secular and democratic India on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the Quit India movement. The House also recalled the sacrifices made by numerous Indians who defied the brutal repression of British forces and shook the foundation of the British rule. Here's a report. Rajya Sabha Chairman yeah, Mohammad Hamid Ansari moved a resolution on 75 years of the Quit India movement the in the House on Wednesday. Asandra. Members pledged to uphold and safeguard the values of an ideal yes. India. This House recalls that 75 years ago, Mahatma Gandhi called for the British to quit India and gave the clarion call, do or die, to the Indian people to end the British rule observes on the 75th anniversary of the Quit India movement that it is important to remember the heroic struggle of the Indian people, students, peasants, women, workers and government officials who defied the brutal repression of the British Raj to launch massed Satyagira that shook the very foundations of the British rule. Acknowledges that this is also an occasion to recall with gratitude the sacrifices of millions of our people and salute the memory of thousands of Indians who gave their lives for the freedom of India. And on this day, solemnly takes a pledge to uphold and safeguard the values and ideals of the freedom movement and ourselves to build an India that is strong, self-reliant, inclusive, secular and democratic. The Quit India movement was launched at the Bombay session of the All India Congress Committee by Mahatma Gandhi on the 8th of August 1942 during the Second World War. It demanded an end to British rule in India. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Zero Hour and Question Hour were also suspended in Rajya Sabha on Wednesday to hold the special discussion to mark the 75th anniversary of the Quit India movement. Members recalled the events of 1942, hailing the leaders who led the movement then. Tributes were also paid to the heroes of the struggle who made the supreme sacrifice for the country. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley initiated a special debate in Rajya Sabha on Wednesday, marking the 75th anniversary of the Quit India movement launched by Mahatma Gandhi in 1942. Jaitley said that India has faced many challenges over decades, but with each challenge, the country has emerged stronger. He called on citizens to commit to make India a strong, just and economically progressive country, also stressing on the need to fight the global menace of terrorism. इस 75 साल की अवधि काल में हमने देखा कि विश्व में 
कई ऐसे देश थे जहां विभिन्न प्रकार के राजनीतिक संकट आए चुनौतियां हमारे देश के सामने भी आई लेकिन आज गर्व के साथ हम ये कह सकते हैं कि हर चुनौती के साथ ये देश और मजबूत होता गया आज का ये दिन इतिहास का एक प्रतिनिधि है और इसलिए हम सब इस देश को मजबूत न्याय संगत और एक प्रगतिशील आर्थिक दृष्टि से बनाए इसके लिए आज प्रण लेने का एक समय है मैं आपका माननीय सभापति जी का और सभी सदस्यों का आभारी हूं कि सबने आज सहमति व्यक्त की कि इस दिन हम प्रस्तावना करें कि देश को इस दिशा के अंदर लेकर जाएं मैं स्वयं को भी इस भावना के साथ पूर्ण रूप से जोड़ता हूं लीडर ऑफ ऑपोजिशन गुलाम नबी आजाद रिकॉल द इवेंट्स रिलेटेड टू द क्विट इंडिया मूवमेंट मेंशनिंग हाउ हिंदू मुस्लिम यूनिटी मेड द मूवमेंट सक्सेसफुल क्योंकि एक सबसे बड़ी बात क्विट इंडिया मूवमेंट की हुई थी कि कोई दंगा क्रिमिनल दंगा नहीं हुआ क्योंकि महात्मा गांधी और पंडित जवाहरलाल नेहरू दोनों ने 8 अगस्त को अपने भाषणों में कहा था कि एक हिंदू और मुसलमान मिलके रहेंगे तो ये हम आजादी हासिल करके रहेंगे और मैं बधाई देता हूं उस वक्त के करोड़ों हिंदू और मुसलमानों ने कि इस पूरे संघर्ष में तीन साल के बाद छोड़ा गया उनको 1945 तक की लड़ाई लड़ी गई गई कोई हिंदू मुसलमान दंगा हजारों लोग मारे गए लाखों लोग जेल में गए लेकिन एक जगह भी हिंदू और मुसलमान दंगा नहीं समाजवादी पार्टी मेंबर राम गोपाल यादव स्पोक अबाउट द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ सोशलिस्ट लीडर्स लाइक राम मनोहर लोहिया एंड जय प्रकाश नारायण वाइल जे डी यू शरद यादव स्ट्रेस ऑन द नीड टू लर्न फ्रॉम हिस्ट्री जिनसे हमको सबक लेना चाहिए था और उस इतिहास को हमें वर्तमान से लेके आगे आने वाली पीढ़ी को भी याद रखने के लिए कायम रखना चाहिए इतिहास को बदलने की इतिहास को बनाने की नई पीढ़ी उसको जान सके इस तरह की अगर बात होगी तो हमारा जो शानदार अतीत रहा है उसका कोई फिर आने वाली पीढ़ी के लिए मतलब नहीं रह जाए इतिहास की सच्चाई आने वाली राह की सच्चाई होती है इतिहास की गवाही बुनियाद होती है और उस बुनियाद को एक ईट भी इधर से उधर गाड़ देंगे आप लगा देंगे तो फिर आगे आने वाली इमारत जो खड़ी है वो गिर के भर भर आके गिर जाए सी पी आई एम जनरल सेक्रेटरी सीताराम येचुरी से न्यू लिबरल इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी दैट आर इम्पावरिशिंग पीपल शुड क्विट इंडिया please if there is no, anything continue. that must quit india today on its 75th anniversary it is these neoliberal economic policies that are impoverishing the mass of my people it is this communalism that is dividing my country and it is disuniting our people in the struggle to create a better india okay ncp's majid memon said the day must be celebrated as a national festival just like independence day hame chahiye hame chahiye ki awaaz ki vyavastha kare hame chahiye कि हम मुलाजमत की व्यवस्था करें हमें चाहिए कि गरीब और अमीर के फैसलों को कम करें हमें चाहिए कि हम अत्याचार मिटाएं हमें चाहिए कि हम हेटरेट को मिटाएं ये नफरत की के बड़े बड़े पहाड़ खड़े किए जा रहे हैं आपस में लोगों को बांटने की कोशिश की ये कैसा फ्रीडम है पचहत्तर वर्ष के बाद हमने क्या आज़ादी प्राप्त की है Members of several other parties also articulated their views on the movement and the need to uphold the constitutional values. On the eve of 75th year of Quit India movement, we dedicate ourselves to rebuild this great secular, democratic, sovereign, socialist, socialist country that is India. ये सारे हिंदुस्तान की जनता की एक ऐतिहासिक योगदान था जिसमें दस हजार से अधिक लोगों को गोली से उड़ा दिया गया था लाखों लोगों को जेल भेज दिया गया था और इस तरह हिंदुस्तान आजाद हुआ हमें अगर चाहिए किसी से मुक्ति चाहिए तो भ्रष्टाचार मुक्त भारत हमको चाहिए सांप्रदायिक मुक्त भारत हमें चाहिए भेदभाव मुक्त भारत हमें चाहिए जो सामंतवादी व्यवस्था है 
गैर बराबरी की जो व्यवस्था है अभी उससे आजादी नहीं मिली है उस आजादी के लिए अभी हमें संघर्ष करना है आज भी करोड़ों लोग गैर बराबरी की जिंदगी जी रहे हैं सामंतवादी व्यवस्था के तहत आज करोड़ों दलित सोचे समाज के लोग स्वतंत्र नहीं है द ओनली रियल प्रिजन इज फियर एंड द ओनली रियल फ्रीडम इज फ्रीडम फ्रॉम फियर and okay, sanju ki said this and if our women if our people if our dalits if the, the underprivileged and the backward yeah. communities in our, and the minorities are not fe- freed from fear yes. of the future then there is nothing okay. to feel proud Thank about is andolan mein ahimsa ne kaam kiya hai lekin is desh mein aise bahut se krantikari the jisne bam banaye जिसने ब्रिटिश पार्लियामेंट पर बम फेंके हैं, जिसने बंदूकें उठाई है हम उनको भी याद करना चाहिए इसीलिए ब्रिटिशों के मन में दहशत फैल गई थी। आई फील वी शुड ऑल रिफ्लेक्ट स्पीचेस वी कैन मेक बट कलेक्टिवली टुडे वी शुड नॉट इंडल्ज इन एनी ब्लेम गेम बट रिफ्लेक्ट हाउ डू वी अचीव देर प्रिंसिपल्स देर ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड वॉट दैट दे फॉट फॉर कम्युनिस्ट डिड प्ले a glorious role heroic role in the struggle for independence m singarvelu who hailed from a fisherman community who was considered to be the first communist in south india who addressed the gaya session of the eicc and he addressed the delegates as comrades it is not that communists only gave purna swarajya a slogan they also address the congressmen as com- comrades and we all should fight for the independence and upliftment of the poor people in the country the house also observed silence in the memory of the martyrs with kriti mishra bureau report rajya sabha tv and to mark the anniversary lok sabha unanimously passed a resolution pledging to work tirelessly in the next 5 years to build a nation as envisioned by Mahatma Gandhi and other freedom fighters Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Congress President Sonia Gandhi were among those who shared their views On the 75th anniversary of the Quit India movement Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the Lok Sabha on Wednesday terming poverty lack of education and malnutrition as the greatest challenges Prime Minister Modi called for special initiatives to end such ills in the next 5 years हमारे भी लालन पालन विचारधारा अलग अलग रही होगी लेकिन यह समय की मांग है यह समय की मांग है कि हम कुछ बिंदुओं से देश को मुक्त कराने के लिए संकल्प का अवसर लेकर के चले चाहे गरीबी हो भूखमरी हो अशिक्षा हो अंतःश्रद्धा हो द प्राइम मिनिस्टर स्पीच ऑल्सो फोकस्ड ऑन करप्शन दैट ही सेड हैज एडवर्सली इंपैक्टेड डेवलपमेंट करो या मरो उस समय का सूत्र था करेंगे या मरेंगे आज 2017 में 2022 को भारत कैसा हो इस संकल्प लेकर के अगर चलना है तो हम लोगों को भी हम सब मिलकर के देश से भ्रष्टाचार दूर करेंगे और करके रहेंगे हम सभी मिलकर गरीबों को उनका अधिकार दिलाएंगे और दिलाकर रहेंगे Congress President Sonia Gandhi also spoke on the occasion taking a veiled jibe at the RSS she said some organizations had opposed the quit india movement and played no role in the freedom movement without taking names sonia gandhi said the politics of division and hate in the country was endangering the plural and egalitarian values enshrined in the constitution aisa lagta hai ki secular loktantrik और उदारवादी मूल्य खतरे में पड़ते जा रहे हैं पब्लिक स्पेस में असहमति बहस और विचारों की विभिन्नता की गुंजाइश कम होती जा रही है Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan and other members also spoke about the need to start an initiative to unite the people of the country as was done during the Quit India movement अब हमें भारत जोड़ो आंदोलन की जरूरत है एक ऐसा आंदोलन जो कश्मीर से लेकर कन्याकुमारी तक देश के सभी हिस्सों में चलाया जाए ताकि हम एक सबल 
और संगठित भारत का निर्माण कर सके सेवेंटी ईयर्स इंडिपेंडेंस languages of this country called <laughs> national language not regional language if he truly wants all evils to quit india by 2022 including communalism in the pejorative sense of the word we hope that he will be un he will unambiguously condemn and take stronger action against those who are spreading the poison of hatred under the slogan of the digital india i fully agree but agriculture is the backbone of our country but the backbone is now madam broken we see that thousands of farmers coming in madhya pradesh rajasthan maharashtra and yes. in other places okay. it is not a political struggle it is yes. a struggle no, for It's the okay. survival okay. On the 75th anniversary of the Quit India movement, both the Congress and the BJP paid homage to the watershed moment. While the Congress Working Committee passed a resolution reiterating the importance of the movement, the BJP's youth wing started a Bharat Jodo Abhiyan to mark the occasion. With inputs from Pranav Goswami, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. Former Union Minister and Member of Parliament from Ajmer, Savarlal Savarlal Jhat, passed away this morning in Delhi. Jat was undergoing treatment at AIMS and had fainted during a meeting of Rajasthan BJP MLAs and MPs with party chief Amit Shah in Jaipur on the 22nd of July. He was rushed to the Savai Man Singh Hospital in Jaipur and later shifted to AIMS in Delhi where he's where he breathed his last. Jat was elected to Rajasthan Assembly 5 times between 1990 and May 2014. He had served as Minister of State for Water Resources in the Narendra Modi government. The Lok Sabha paid glowing tributes to the de deceased. The members stood in silence for a minute as a mark of respect to the departed soul. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also expressed shock over his demise. Sri Savarlal Jhat, 9 August 2017, को उनका बासठ वर्ष की आयु में दिल्ली में निधन हुआ. हम अपने साथी के निधन पर गहन शोक व्यक्त करते हैं और मुझे विश्वास है कि शोक संतप्त परिवार को सांत्वना देने में सभा मेरा साथ देगी इन अदर न्यूज द कांग्रेस एक्सपेल्ड एट एम एल एज इन गुजरात हु वोटेड अगेंस्ट अहमद पटेल इन ट्यूजडेज राज्यसभा इलेक्शन फॉर्मर राजस्थान चीफ मिनिस्टर अशोक गहलोत हु इज द सेक्रेटरी जनरल इन चार्ज ऑफ गुजरात सेड ऑन वेंसडे दैट द एम एल एज वर एक्सपेल्ड फॉर सिक्स ईयर्स फॉर वायोलेटिंग द विप The move comes soon after the party veteran secured his seat in the upper house in a nail-biting contest. Now to Mumbai where the Maratha community has intensified its agitation for reservation in government jobs and educational institutions. Lakhs of people from across Maharashtra converged in Mumbai to join the massive protest march that threw Mumbai's traffic and railway network into disarray. Here's a report. Mumbai turns into a sea of saffron with lakhs of Marathas gathering in the city to demand reservation in government jobs and educational institutions. Wearing saffron caps and carrying flags, protest gathered from all parts of Maharashtra and walked down Mumbai's busy JJ flyover which was closed for traffic and marched towards the protest venue Azad Maidan. Amid tight security the Maratha Kranti Morcha began its silent march on Wednesday morning from the Jija Mata Udyan in Baikula where the protesters tore off banners put up by Shiv Sena saying they do not want political interference. A reservation to milna hi chahiye kyunki itna भीड अभी आ रही है मुंबई में पूरे महाराष्ट्र से मराठा समाज के बांधव यहाँ पर आए हैं आता तीन से साढ़े तीन से वर्षा नंतर एवढा मोठा प्रमाण अपना मराठा समाज एक वर्ष लाया तो ऐसे बापरे मुख्यमंत्री दखल ताबोर तो कहला पाए जाएगा मुझे अजूनी तेंचे कोण काही प्रतिक्रिया आली नहीं है आणि आता तर आमचा त्यांनी घेतला नाही दखल तर आमचं याच्या पुढे उग्र आंदोलन चालू करू आणि महिला आम्ही सगळे आमरण उपोषणाला बसू द मॅसिव्ह प्रोटेस्ट डिस्ट्रॉप्टेड ट्रॅफिक अँड होल्टेड मुंबईज रेल्वे नेटवर्क ॲज 10000 पोलीस पर्सनल स्टेड ऑन गार्ड 
Over 400 schools in the affected areas were shut as a precautionary measure. Mumbai's famous Dabbawalas too joined the march, suspending their operations to deliver lunches to hundreds of offices. Many political parties have thrown their weight behind the Maratha community, including BJP allies Shiv Sena and RPIA, and the Congress and NCP. <laughs> मराठ्यांना आरक्षण मिळालं पाहिजे हा मुद्दा आम्ही मांडला त्यांना आरक्षण दिलं दुर्दैवाने आमच्या नंतर आलेल्या शिवसेना बीजेपी सरकारने ज्या पद्धतीने कोर्टामध्ये पूरी तरह से सरकार को लेके नाराजगी है जो सरकार ने वादे किए पिछले तीन साल में उसे वो पूरा नहीं कर रहे हैं सरकार उनकी मांगों को दरकिनार कर रही है इसलिए आज इतना विशाल मोर्चा मुंबई शहर में निकला है the silent march was the concluding protest of a series of 57 marches organized by the state's Maratha community to press for its demands. Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV. The, 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 the Dalai Lama has said that the Sikkim Doklam standoff between India and China is not very serious as India and China have to live side by side, asserting that any problem has to be resolved through talks. The 81 year old Tibetan spiritual leader said that the theme of 21st century should be dialogue. Speaking at an event in New Delhi, the Dalai Lama also invoked the Hindi Chini Bhai Bhai catchphrase that defined the India China relations in the 1950s. I don't think this is very serious. I don't think. Look, 62 uh, Chinese forces reach uh, to Bomdela and beyond, but eventually withdraw. So nobody, I mean both sides, dare to uh, carry big war. I don't think. Meanwhile, in international news, the war of words between North Korea and the U.S. took a worrying turn on Wednesday when Pyongyang threatened to launch a missile strike on the U.S. Pacific territory of Guam. This came just hours after U.S. President Trump told the North that any threat to the U.S. would be met with fire and fury. Here are more details. Any plans to execute the preventive war devised by the U.S. would be met with an all-out war wiping out the strongholds of enemies, including the U.S. mainland. That's a KRT newsreader quoting the Korean People's Party spokesperson. The party claims that Pyongyang was carefully examining a plan to strike Guam with a medium to long-range strategic ballistic rocket, Wasong-12, to contain the U.S.'s major military bases on the Pacific Territory, including the Anderson Air Force Base. It was a series of events on Tuesday that led to the North's sharp rise in rhetoric. First, a report in the Washington Post citing U.S. intelligence officials suggested North Korea is developing nuclear weapons capable of hitting the U.S. at a much faster rate than expected. Then, a Japanese government defense white paper also said the weapons program had advanced considerably and that North Korea possibly now had nuclear weapons. In response to that, U.S. President Trump warned North Korea to stop threatening the U.S. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. He has been very threatening uh, beyond a normal statement. And as I said, they will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power, the likes of which this world has never seen before. Meanwhile, the governor of Guam pacified the people of the island and said that it was prepared for any eventuality. I'm working with Homeland Security, the Rear Admiral, and the United States to ensure our safety. And I want to reassure the people of Guam that currently there is no threat to our island or the Marianas. Also watching developments closely is South Korea. The government admitted that the North's latest military threat wasn't good for the relationship of the two Koreas. Pyongyang, which has tested nuclear devices five times, launched two intercontinental ballistic missiles in July, claiming it now had the ability to hit the mainland U.S. 
On Tuesday, media reports in the U.S. claimed the North had achieved its goal in making a nuclear warhead small enough to fit inside its missiles. Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV. Violent protests erupted in several parts of Kenya on Wednesday after opposition leader Raila Odinga alleged fraud in the presidential election. Odinga said that hackers used the identity of a murdered official to infiltrate the database of the country's election commission and manipulate the results, which showed a massive lead for President Uruhu Kunyata. Soon after Odinga spoke on television, angry protesters burned tires, set up broad roadblocks and clashed with the police. In retaliation, the police opened fire at the agitators in which one person is reported to have been killed. With results from almost all of the polling stations counted, President Uruhu Kenyatta was shown with a wide lead over Odinga in his bid for a second term. And here's what made news across the world as well in Global Buzz. A 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck a remote mountainous part of China's southwestern province of Sichuan. According to reports, 19 people were killed, including six tourists, and about 247 people were injured. A separate quake of magnitude 6.6 .6 also hit a remote part of China's far northwestern region of Xinjiang, in which 32 people were injured. 45,000 tourists have been evacuated from the quake zones, with just 1,000 more still waiting to leave. Pakistan's ousted Premier Nawaz Sharif went on a journey to Lahore from Islamabad via the famous Grand Trunk Road to show his popularity among the people despite security concerns following a bomb blast in the Punjab province capital. Sharif had held a meeting with Prime Minister Shahid Khakan Abbasi, the new cabinet ministers and senior party leaders before starting the 370-kilometer long journey. A car rammed into a group of soldiers in a Parisian suburb, injuring six of them before speeding off. Officials said the BMW car was parked in an alley before it accelerated onto the soldiers as they left their barracks to go on patrol duty. According to reports, two of the six soldiers were seriously injured. The search for the driver and vehicle is still underway. Hundreds participated in a memorial ceremony in Japan's Nagasaki, commemorating the day when the U.S. dropped an atomic bomb on the city 72 years ago. More than 150,000 people died in that horrific incident. The ceremony was held at the Nagasaki Peace Park and was attended by Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, local residents and relatives of the victims. And that's all we have for you in your news tonight. Thank you so much for joining us.